Hi, Dan. Hi. I'm here with Dan Mazzoni, uh, a young artist, as you can see, who has been touted as the upcoming Andy Warhol oh. <laughs> in the art world. Yeah. So, Dan, I'm sure that there were times in your rocky road, along your rocky road, where there were hurdles that kept getting in your way. There were fears that held you back. Do you remember what the final one was, if there was one, whether it was a, a, a hurdle or a pebble, past which you said there's no turning back? Yeah, well, actually, you know, funny you say that, I actually remember the exact moment. It was, um, I had a job and it was the typical, you know, uh, can't wait for the weekend, can't sleep on Sundays because I know tomorrow's work. And I thought, I remember sitting on the phone with one of my friends and saying, you know, I, I can't picture this being my life where, you know, you're, you're actually, I mean, if you think about it, five days of the week, you're wishing for them to disappear. And I thought, I'm dying for 80% of my life to disappear. You know, I need something to look forward to. I just hated being that. I hated not having something that I loved and something to look forward to. And it necessarily wasn't um, a career change. It was just something to be happy about. And there was nothing at that point. So uh, my friend had said, well, you know, you, you used to do art when you were a kid. Maybe you should just do it as a hobby, like for fun. And I thought, you know what, that's great. Because when I was a kid, I used to do art with my mom. She was an artist. She did stained glass. And, uh, and, and I remember loving it when I was a kid. And I thought, you know, I'm going to get a canvas tomorrow. And I got a canvas. And I thought, okay, cool. So uh, I don't know how to paint. Um, but I did remember some stuff that my mom used to teach me with the stained glass. And I always loved collecting old newspapers and magazines and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice to do a collage that sort of looked like stained glass? But I also had all these historical newspapers. And I said, well, wouldn't it be cool to tell a story as well with all the different pieces? Because there's different pieces to a story. And uh, so I started messing around and I was super happy. And I remember going to work and all I could focus on was drawing stuff at work. And so excited to go home and, and, and do something. And, and work on my artwork and then so I had done that for about five months and I actually had showed I didn't show anybody my artwork uh, but the, a restaurant I worked at while I was in school the owner had seen some of my came by for a drink and he had seen some of my artwork and he said you know this is really great do you mind if I sell it in my restaurant I thought they were pretty expensive for me to make and I didn't think you know for the amount that it cost me to make I didn't think anybody would pay more than that for the piece so I said, no, nah. I said, I don't think I want you to sell them. He says, no, nah, just leave it up to me because I had to explain that to him. And then he called me a few days later and he said, hey, you know, someone paid, you know, X amount of dollars for your piece. And it was, it was a lot of money, uh, especially for a first piece. And, I, and at, that, at that moment, I had, you know, it was the dream that I had when I was a kid to, to be an artist. And uh, it was, all of it became a possibility at that moment. So... When I went to go meet my boss on the way to my boss, I called my boss, sorry, my ex-boss. I called my boss at the moment and I just told her that this happened and I was going to take a year off work and uh, maybe I would call her in the air and she, she actually said, don't call back. <laughs> she was mad that I quit at nine o'clock at night, but uh, it was that moment there where I said, I'm done. I quit. This is what I'm going to do and I never give up. Thank you, Dan. And I hope you all enjoy this.